Driving on the road like I'm the only one. Shooting to the green, I talk a hole in one. Bible on the dash, stay with the holy one. I know I put in work, they didn't notice none. Switch gears, clubhouse, took me six years, marble floors, gold trim, feel like I'm Richie Rich, tie left, French suede, I mix the fist sick, quick loss, take a risk, we play for the win. Might spend a mill at the rug store like Manafort, but making purchases you can't afford. I move the money like it's illegal, something more of, rigor mortar, swear I move dead, people lay low, took L's, know how those days go, say so, he say, but nothing ain't no pesos. Lock. It's like a case closed, bank road, different league, we don't use money phones Trusting the artist, he's staying steady for it Pray up to the Lord, he knows I'm ready for it All on the earners, you know I'm heading towards it Eyes on the Rolex, it's like you know a Chevy what? Ford Driving on the road like I'm the only one day. Shooting to the green, I talk because only one Because when moves like this, I'm always ready with to shoot one. out of bed I know I put in work, they didn't I notice nothing what is really good guys this is gonna be yet another quick update for you right so yeah what we do as pattern watchers let me kill this music man this is what we need to do, guys. You know, I've got to be conscious of the time zones around the world. It's probably like half five in the afternoon for you guys. All right. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm turning it down. I've turned it down. I've turned it down. I've turned it down. <laughs> yeah, it's all down. It's all down. There we go. All right, and guys, so... Can you hear me? Is the sound good now? Can you can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right then. So, we're going to go I'm going to go straight into talking about what is going on right now. All right? And then I will let you guys be. <laughs> You never catch me drunk on a stream, guys. You'll never catch me doing that. Turn your music down. Get off my lawn. <laughs> okay, then. So, fundamentally, guys, what do we say? If you've watched any of the streams, you'll always hear me banging on about not to trade on a Monday. In Forex... No trades are taken on a Monday in from in my experience. Don't take them on a Monday. Why? Because it's the false move week beginning. Because let's look at the psychology of people, okay, in Forex. They can't place any trades over the weekend because the markets are closed, all right? So there's news that's coming out over the weekend, all right, talking about dollar yen, talking about cable, euro, USD, you name it, okay? Hey, life was good. So the only time that they get a chance to place any orders is Sunday night, 10 p.m. GMT. All right. That's when they can place the orders because that's when the Asian session starts or what we would understand to be Monday. All right. Then when Monday across Europe comes into play and then the U.S., everybody comes to the charts feeling excited or they are they are compelled to do something on a Monday. Market makers exploit that. They know that people are itching to place trades. All right. That's why Monday always sets up the false move. Now, if you go back in the previous streams, you will notice that anytime Elon drops any bad news about anything, it always happens during after market hours when there's the dead gap time, the dead time, the market maker hour is when New York's closed, London's closed, Sydney's closed and Asia is closed. All right. There's nothing. And look at what we've got right now. We've got this chaotic move to the downside, but there's no need to be worried about anything, guys, because it's only come back down to the projected zone from last week, which we said would be the inverted head and shoulders on the higher time frame. OK, this area here. 
all right and she hasn't actually taken out this previous area here this weekly low right here for the week she's not taken down the previous weekly low all right she's ever so close to it look can you see that so i'm going to draw it now that is where it's finished and look where the weekly low is finished right there that was last week's low all right ever so close to it but it hasn't broken it it's very important that is granted they could push price down lower but the move happened here all right that's what we need to understand let me tidy up my charts guys sorry let me just bring it closer for you all right oh shit man guys look man i'm tired i'm sorry there you go boomer 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 far wow there you go i need to stop this i need to stop this sporadic moments of coming onto the stream sorry guys i'm so sorry <laughs> i'll put full screen on and go sleep jesus man this is terrible this is this is embarrassing now it's gone beyond actually Ugh. <laughs> All right, then. Who we got in here? <laughs> Mike. <laughs> He's so pissed off. <laughs> Sorry, man. That is so bad. I know. All right, then. Cool. Bitcoin Brad, what's good, guy, man? How you doing, bro? Thank you, man. All right, let me start that again. So, bit, look, I'll summarize it. This line right here is Bitcoin's last week low. All right. This is the low that they hit last week. This is where it is now. And this is where the pin came. All right. It hasn't broken last week's low. So why is everybody upset or worried about anything? It's only come back down to the previous zone that it was at before. All right. Now, of course, we have to expect the unexpected at a moment's notice. We're operating in the realm of uncertainty yet again. And I'll say it to remind you guys. All right, that as much as we make our projections and they play out on the shorter time frame or on the higher time frames, we have to factor in that these moments do happen in this game. All right. Now, what do we need to consider? All right. Bitcoin is still stuck in that 8K boring range. Nothing has happened with crypto right now. Nothing has happened with Bitcoin. And anyone that's going on about Bitcoin completely collapsing, granted, right now, based on what we look at right now, all I can see is Bitcoin has pinned the low and it's spiked all the way back up. What do we understand? Let's go down in the lower time frame, guys, and let's do a repeat from last night. Because I know you guys got cheese last night. You made some cake from last night's stream. I know you did because we caught that low and it recovered every single candle. All right, let's just go back from last night. This area here, spiked the low and then it just went all the way back up wonderful behavior last night i was very happy with bitcoin last night now here we go volume is light across the board yes volatility isn't this is where the market makers behave this is their territory look at this beautiful accumulation of orders at the bottom right here pin the low back pin 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 they are working the lows all right, they're taking people's orders. They're hitting people's stops. Vector candles to the downside. Price is away from the 50 EMA. Okay, we understand something. When it's away from the 50, we know that they are going to look to come back into the mean. Price has broken below the psychological high and the psychological low for Bitcoin. But look at how far away it is from the psychological low. It's not that far. Okay. This was an area that it was likely to hit. Okay, let me show you something. This is something that I shared across to the patrons earlier on today. This will hopefully help you realize something. So. All right, check this out. So this is a chart that I shared earlier on. All right, there's the before and this was the after. All right. 
so this is what i was waiting for with bitcoin this is was the pattern that we were waiting for of course the m formation okay i can't show you my cursor but you can see the m formation at the top end of the box actually appeared below it but price did come into that projected zone now i anticipated that bitcoin was going to come back down and then make a bounce up that move to the downside has happened now of course when you're projecting you're not going to draw it out perfectly okay because you will never know exactly what price the behavior of price at any projected zone but you use it as a gauge to help you understand that you understand the way that they try and move price all right and that's the power of projection right there you're going to train your eyes to see something it will never be perfect but it will be damn good close to it all right so here we go let's talk vector candles to the downside we understand something about them this vector candle didn't finish at its lows it tells me something that they're going to look to recover back up is that a sign for you guys to step in and start placing orders no don't be irrational don't just take my word for it okay don't think that you're missing out on anything my advice to you guys is do not trade Mondays. Don't trade weekends. Keep your capital for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and possibly Friday, depending on how they treat us on that day. But the reason why they come out with all this information and it always comes out during these dead gap times is because it's a free world for them. This is where market makers can really exploit the zone. They're setting this shit up for Asia. All right. They've come back down to the zones yet again. Look, let's bring down the one hour time frame. They've come back down to this zone yet again. Do you understand that if it can't break this zone right here and it can't break below here, do you understand that how much strength is going to come into this coin? All right. If they can't break down lower. Now, remember, guys, this is a short term day trading strategy. All my people that are going to be looking at this when they're ready for their entries, they know that they're going to be able to ride price back to the 50. If they ride it back to the 50, they've made their money. They don't care what happens next. They know that they can either ride the price back to the 50 and then probably open a short at the 50 if Bitcoin wants to continue lower. Happy days. The idea is to get your money in good and get out. All right. In the eyes of poker you always like you know you always hit yourself and you say man i wish i should have shoved at that point or i wish i would have re-raised that person or i wish i just would have done something all right get your money in good and when you do you do it at the right time you set it so that up the 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 circumstances and the conditions are favoring your entry and how do you do that? Well, you wait for the busiest time of the week and it starts on a Tuesday. OK, this is where they manipulate this. I mean, guys, look, look at this for Monday, guys. This is Monday. Look at this boring movement on Monday. Yeah, stuck in a range and then it slowly drops. This is the false move week beginning. And if they stop talking about cryptocurrency in a negative way, then maybe we will see some actual trading behavior. Because all they're doing right now is manipulating it to the nines. Cryptocurrency is unregulated, guys. It's so unregulated. They can do whatever they want. Someone's going to step in and say, yo, just stop talking about it. Yeah? This is it. We don't care about price and we don't care about Mondays. Let them let them manipulate everyone else into inducing. Look, this is what's funny. OK. Everyone across the board now is talking about Bitcoin dropping down all the way to 2019, 18,000. But for God's sake, guys, where's it gone? It hasn't gone anywhere that it hasn't been before. It didn't even break last week's low. So why are you in a position to say that? The only time you should really say that is if Bitcoin comes all the way down here to 28,000. That's when you have a valid claim that Bitcoin's going to go to 20. You don't make the claim when it's at 34,000. How do you know it's going to go down there if it can't even break below the, 35, um, the 33 mark? How do you know it's going to go to 32? Right now, all we have is what we've got right in front of us. And if you can't put that in your mind and understand the concept of 
working with what you've got right now, you're then going to be setting yourself up to have expectations. And if those expectations don't come through, what if you're in a real time trade? What if you're in a trade and you're waiting for an expectation to happen? This is why I say to you, do not be results based orientated. Don't assume that if you make your entry now and it needs to cut, it will go back down to 31K because it's been dropping like this today. You're making it your decision or the outcome of your desired result is based on a result. And that's not what you need to be doing. You need to be making your decisions based on what you see right now and judge every single moment of your trade as completely unique. If you've read the Mark Douglas book on trading in the zone, he emphasizes so much on this. That is the only book that has made such a huge impression on my trading because it helped me click. It helped me realize that thinking in terms of probabilities and allowing myself to think in probabilities all right, you can recognize it, but if you don't apply it or practice it, you're going to be done for shit. All right, it's so important you understand that, guys. Every moment that you decide to trade is different from the last moment, which is why you can't be married to a trade. You can't be biased to one direction. You have to take what you see. We use certain things to help us make those decisions. Look at what we've got right now. Bitcoin is now recovering the vector candles. Drop down to the 15 minute time frame. What do we see? Come back from last night's stream. You saw how they recovered the vector candles. Is it going to do it again? Things are favoring that movement. Happy days. Let's drop onto Ethereum. What do we see? Vector candle coming back up. Happy days. Why have they? Look at that. Ethereum didn't even tap its psychological low. All right. Monday. False move week beginning. It has been done on purpose. Trigger the shorts. Allow them to build more longs at lower prices because they want to smash through key numbers. 3k for Ethereum, 40k for Bitcoin and for XRP, the pound mark. All right. Look at that beautiful behavior. Everyone on YouTube is absolutely losing their mind and we're probably the only stream that is so excited that they've done this move because we understand something, guys. We understand how the market makers do this. And we've sat, sat through enough stream time to, to recognize it. And every day we are training our minds and our eyes to be receptive to this behavior. Remember, it's not a case of if it will go there. It's a matter of when. All right. That's what it is. Look, everyone's, yeah, let FUD boys FUD out. What do I like to say? Shut the FUD up. <laughs> if you go, here's one for you guys. Go back in the streams and search for the video thumbnail that says shut the FUD up. And this moment that we are sitting through right now was exactly the same moment as um, previously. All right. And you're just going to see the same thing happen again. Nice spike. This is a fast move, false move, guys. You're saying to me that they can drop so fast. Yet when, when price is rising, they take their time. Let's look at it. I mean, like I said to you, look, it's they're taking so... Look at this nice move upwards, slow, progressive move. Yet this move here has happened in less than two, two hours. And what is that? Yeah? What the fuck are you on about? <laughs> This is psychological warfare. And just for the record, guys, yes, the reason why this move has happened is not because of Trump. It's not because of Elon. I got inside word that Steve managed to actually sell that 58 cents worth of Bitcoin. So, guys, be careful. Steve might be looking to buy. <laughs> no, it's not the New York reversal. Look, New York didn't do anything. They just trickled price down. They, then this news about Trump as well. They just use it as an excuse, but it didn't really do much to the market. <laughs> My God. This is what liquidated the long. Steve. You know what, guys? Steve is going to stick with us for a long time. No. Yeah. 
This is true. Finally, he speaks the truth. <laughs> but jokes aside, guys, remember, yeah? Like, you've come into the game of trading. This is what it's about. Now, in Forex, you don't exactly get this sort of volatility. All right? Forex, they have regulations in Forex. They can't really allow price to do wild things. The only time they do it is when there's a news announcement and it's free for all for the market makers. All right? But please, when you come into this game of crypto, like I've learned, you have to be prepared and you have to make it so that the conditions are in your favor. Now, you'll never get every trade correct. That's fine. But you use the London Open and the London New York Cross. And when I say London New York Cross, it means when London is open and New York is about to open. That is when volume is at its highest. So you will understand true intention when they move price during those times because this has happened on low volume. Tell me what market is open right now. What bank is open right now? Nothing. All right. This is their opportunity to move price in such a way so they can get their orders filled at lower prices. People have still got stops and they're now doing this sort of behavior so that they can set up the range for tomorrow because tomorrow is when they start making the moves. Is this going to be the low for the week? yeah your forex channel is coming guys it is coming i i've been i've been so busy you would not believe it i'm trying to i'm trying to look after my daughter mini market maker and it's it's crazy it is crazy i'm just all over the place right now but there is order within chaos believe me there is order within chaos Let's have a look at the TDI for a second. Hold on. There you go. See? The volatility of this move to the downside was nothing. Look at today's volatility. All within the volatility band. No shark fins outside the volatility band. This is what you want to look for. These, this, well, not so much that one, but this one here. You want this volatility outside the volatility band. What was the 6th of June? Was it yesterday? Sunday night. There you go. Right there. Pre-market. Where is that? This volatility right here. 5th of June. Was that Friday? No. Saturday. You want this volatility because that shows you intention. All right? But when you see this volatility right here, that's, that's nothing. It's not outside the volatility band. Now look at it. It's coming back up. It's crossed over the market signal. Now it's working towards the market base. Go and watch last night's stream and it will show you exactly that. It will show you this behavior. Doing it again. Now it's going to look to work towards the daily open. And you know what's funny, guys? Because last night it was the same situation. Price had spiked down to the low. All right. And then we had the daily open in sight. We said that the daily open would be seen again. We have the psychological low and we said that the psychological high at that point would be seen again. And it did just that. Let me bring it up for you. All right. Look, the daily open was there. Price had come back down here and we said, be careful, guys. It's going to come back up. Everyone was talking about Bitcoin to 20K at this point. All right. Then what happened? She came up to the daily open, smashed through that. She then came up to the psychological high, smashed through that. And then she formed the high and then she pulled back. Look, this was the zone that I was projecting. And she came ever so close towards it. This area here. All right. So if I zoom out again. Look, she tapped some of that liquidity right there. There's still room for this liquidity, but they want to send it lower yet and get cheaper prices on Bitcoin. Now we can exploit this sort of behavior. Please go ever like I said to you guys for every stream that you watch. All right. Go and watch the one previously because it, we, we, we marry the, the, we talk in real time. We don't operate in hindsight. All right. I ain't going to come to you after all this move, after this happens and say to you, see, I told you guys it would come back up. That's BS. I tell you in real time and I say, 
I call it and say, look, this is what we expect from this zone. All right. That doesn't give you free roam to start placing trades. You are your own people. You are responsible for your own behavior. Okay. If you're having to blame someone else for your trades, trading is not for you guys. Get out of this business. It's not for you. It's not for the faint hearted. It's not for the emotionally weak, although we can become emotional. But how we manage ourselves is the key thing. You can't come to this game and think you can't be emotional. Even traders, veteran traders that have been in the game 30 years still become emotional. Jesse Livermore, my favorite trader. He made 100 million, then he lost 100 million and he made it back. Was he emotional? Of course he was. He committed suicide because of an argument with his missus. All right. We will always be emotional. You take out emotion, we are dead. We all become algorithms and that's not going to happen. But the idea is to effectively maintain your trading psyche. Maintain the psychology in your mind. You are up against yourself. All right. My technical analysis is useless when there's FUD and tweets. Yes, I agree with you, but it's useless to the trader who is emotional and fudded out and anyone that is watching tweets. All right. If you're not paying attention to tweets and you're not paying attention to the FUD out there, you would understand that price is going to come back and recover this zone like it did last night. And look at what it did. It recovered this whole zone. For me, this is a stop hunt low. This is a stop hunt. And that's why 95% of traders lose in this game. Because they're, they, they need to seek the safest option. They need to look for guidance. So you go to Twitter. Nah, it doesn't make sense. You even come to YouTube. Doesn't make sense. You guys being here, just listening to what I'm saying, can be challenged as well. All right. What's up, PC Shed? Accountability, guys. That's what you need to be doing. Accountability. Can I talk about the death cross? You'll know in this stream, bro, that the retail trading methodologies all get squashed by the market makers. They use those methodologies to exploit the retail trader. Where's the death cross on this chart right now? There is no cross. So what do you do? What do you base it on? And the thing is, the death cross here, there was your death cross, right? Your death cross happened there. It would have actually crossed over down here. So you would have been misled. All right. It wouldn't have crossed straight away. It would have taken its time. All right. You would have probably crossed at about this candle right here. Then what would have happened? You would have gone short and you would have rode all the way down here. But you would have thought, hold on. The death cross is still valid. It's still in play. I'm going to hold my trade. Then what happens? Price reverses back to the 50 EMA and takes out every single one of the stops for the guys who simplified and went on the basis of a death cross. Good night, retail trader. Be careful with the retail trading methodologies, guys. You're going to try and apply the market maker. You're trying to exploit the market maker's business model, their business model with retail traders mentality. <laughs> it's not going to work, guys. It's been tried and tested. That's why they keep the same methodology, these market makers. That's why they don't change their business model because everyone's always trying to bring a new indicator to try and exploit it. They may exploit it for the first few thousand trades, but what about longevity? What about the longer term? Why do you still see M's and W's? Why do you always see pins to the high and pins to the low? Why are they not changing? Because they know it works. Why are there thousands of indicators out there all trying to exploit this game? Math, uh, mathematics and whatever you want. Ultimately, you need to understand intention. You understand intention, then you are literally one step ahead of the game. The green blocks are time zones. Death cross on the daily. I mean, how long does that take to form? 
Let's have a I'd hardly look at the daily. Wow. See, I don't look at the daily. On the daily, I can only see just about. I can just see a beautiful W formation on the daily. Absolutely huge formation on the daily. Nice W right there. We will only know if it plays out if price stays within this range and doesn't take out the first leg. Happy days. That's where it is. Yeah. No vector candles in this zone. I'm expecting a vector at some point. Pin bar to the lows. Very important on the daily. All right. Now, listen, guys. Okay. Yes, in terms of levels, yes, this would be deemed... See, this is why I'm saying watch the previous stream. Okay, because we understand the M formation from this high. Drop level 1. Drop level 2. Drop level 3. Peak formation. And you can see we have got our trusty W right there. You see, guys, if you're not placing any entries until you got solid confirmation... Trust me, when the confirmation comes in and the W plays out, you're going to make cheese. And that's what it's about. You're not about being in trades a lot. You're about being in the right trades. That's what it's about. All right. Okay, guys. I'm going to love you, leave you guys. All right. I just wanted to come on and just let you guys know what's going on. Okay. But just just sit back and remember don't trade mondays stay away from it guys there's a reason why they move price at the start of the week because it's in line with their objectives they have a book that they refer to it's a target they have money that needs to be put into the market so that they can make money off it all right these fast moves that happen how do you factor in a tweet how do you factor in someone's opinion of price they use that to move price but the th for the thing is is if you're awake and you're paying attention you would know bitcoin hasn't gone anywhere she's still stuck in this zone they just look at the scare how many people are scared right now is this just another attempt to just scare people yeah go and relax come away from the charts this i'd say that this was Prior to earlier run when I was updating the patrons on a Monday, I rarely look at charts because I too can be tempted. I can see setups that will just pay me out no problem, but I don't take them because I, I've just conditioned my mind to not take them. All right? And you guys should do the same. All right? So, go and enjoy your evenings, guys. I'm going to go to bed for the second time. And listen... Mike just said it. Make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> but more importantly, guys, we're going to do the podcast tomorrow night. Okay? The podcast is going to happen again tomorrow night because of what happened on Friday. We're going to roll it out tomorrow night. So make sure you go and subscribe to Mike's podcast. I'll, I'll be there. I believe State of Crypto is going to be there as well. So if my guy's going to be there, Mike, happy days. If not... We'll just have another conversation. All right. Cool. <laughs> PC shed. <laughs> I don't think you will, bro, because it's not gone anywhere that it hasn't been to before. It's just back to square one, I guess. <laughs> All right, and guys. Yes. Okay. So State of Crypto is happening tomorrow night. So make sure you subscribe to the Mike's podcast channel. I'll be there. And I'm sure everyone else is going to be there too. Tomorrow night, half past 10. I will be doing a stream before that. All right. Because I have to, all, you know, talk about the day's events. But half 10, we'll be rolling out onto the podcast. And this time, everything will be fine. I hope. Yeah. Okay, guys. Mad respect to you all. Go get yourself some rest. I'm going to rest because tomorrow the hunt begins. All right. Mad respect to all of you. Peace.